AMD and Nvidia have been preparing for major new competition in the GPU market for quite some time, as Intel are set to enter the ring with their range of desktop flagship gaming graphics cards. And for a while we've been wondering in the gaming community just how good these new GPUs might be. Well Intel have released a performance preview that sheds some light on the situation, and spoiler alert, it's not looking very good. Let's talk about it. Now you guys will know here on the channel, I don't really care who makes the product that we're featuring as long as it's good. And the same goes for graphics cards. For the latest releases, I've definitely had a tendency to lean towards Nvidia units when recommending the best cards for different budgets, due to slightly better performance than AMD and a more mature feature set. But recommending the same cards over and over again just get a bit boring, which has made me so excited for Intel's launch into the GPU space. A launch that has been on the cards for years. Originally, we were expecting Intel GPUs a couple of years ago, then it was last year, then it was this year, and Intel are finally joining the party as they've released their first graphics card, but only in China. And that leaves us all a bit confused. What's going on, Intel? What's taking quite so long? Is it because you're stockpiling loads of units ready to sell them so that you don't have the embarrassing repeat AMD and Nvidia experience with their current range of cards? Or in fact, is it something a little bit more concerning? Is there a problem with the GPUs? What might the answer to that question be? Well, Intel have just released a short video covering off some performance previews of their Intel Arc cards. And while things look a little promising, dig deeper, and it actually gets a bit worrying. In Intel's recent YouTube video, they actually were really transparent, shedding some light on the performance that we might expect from Intel Arc GPUs. Now on one hand, I love this transparency and props to Intel for being quite so open. And on the other, the skeptics could argue that this is just designed to keep people waiting on those Intel GPUs that little bit more patient. They showed off their A750 GPU, which we're led to believe will be one of the higher end options they offer, comparing it to an RTX 3060. That first then indicates that Intel are perhaps not punching with the heavyweights of the 3080 or 6900 XT just yet, but something I'm not too upset about on the basis that will come with time. And more entry and mid-level GPU options is actually better for the vast majority of gamers than Intel entering the market with a trailblazing 3090 alternative. In the demo, they ran Cyberpunk 2077 and also showed us some graphs with a few other games. At 1440p on the high settings preset using Cyberpunk's benchmark mode, Intel achieved just under 60 FPS on average is what they mentioned from the A750. We're not fully sure of the rest of the hardware yet, but we'd like to hope based on best practices and plain integrity that their comparison numbers are with the same CPU, motherboard, RAM combos and all that good stuff. Intel aren't so stupid to not test on a level playing field and we'll give them the benefit of the doubt there. Initial performance numbers were fairly encouraging. Intel are actually claiming that we should see around a 15% performance uplift on Cyberpunk 2077 with their A750 when compared to an RTX 3060. And if these cards come in at similar prices or maybe even cheaper on the Intel side, that can only be good news, right? Well, maybe not quite. One thing that Intel didn't mention in this video is whether or not their numbers with a 3060 were tested with DLSS enabled. DLSS is of course Nvidia's AI-backed resolution scaler that helps you to get more frame rate in a range of titles. Now, some people would say using DLSS is cheating, but the technology's got so good nowadays that you can't really tell the difference between a game with DLSS on and with DLSS off. The only notable difference is of course the frame rate, which only gets better. As if that perhaps wasn't bad enough for Intel, Nvidia and AMD are set to release their next generation of cards very soon. And while I wouldn't expect to see Nvidia's 3060 till next year, there's nothing to say they couldn't bring that release forward or massively drop the price of the existing 3060 Ti, a card that will undoubtedly be Intel's A750, in order to actually kill Intel's GPU as a good value proposition. With all new Nvidia releases, we often expect to see a 20% performance uplift or so, but the rumors are pointing to more like a 30, 40, or even a 50% performance gain with the next gen of cards. Something which, to be fair, would line up with what we saw on 30 series. A range of cards that, remember, was so popular, no one could even buy them. At least not until now, but that's a whole other video for another day. As if things perhaps weren't even more worrying, the host Ryan Strout then went on to say that these aren't necessarily performance numbers we should expect to see in all titles. Once again, hinting to the fact that maybe the card performs well in certain games, but not in others. Now, to be fair to Intel, that makes sense. They're gonna have to optimize drivers over time, and game developers who have been working with AMD and Nvidia on the graphics side for years are now gonna have to optimize for new hardware. 
And as we saw with AMD's releases, the performance numbers will only get better as time goes on. That of course something that's playing into Intel's favours. Perhaps what this video from Intel was, was a little bit of a reality check. I massively praise them for their openness in terms of giving the gaming community an honest answer and an honest preview as to their next gen GPUs. But I can't help but feel like they're setting expectations up to minimise disappointment rather than to contain excitement. Now when you look at it from a realistic perspective, this kind of makes sense. Any manufacturer's first foray into a major new component type, especially something as complicated as a GPU, which takes billions and billions of dollars worth of investment, is never going to be a smash hit from day one. It's going to take time for any new player with the right resources, Intel of course fit in all of those criteria, to actually get up to speed with the incumbents in the market. What this potentially also hints at is maybe Intel's focus on the near term at focusing their graphics technology to OEMs. As performance workloads for PCs increase, a CPU is no longer often enough to power certain workloads, with a greater degree of GPU optimized applications really making the most of your dedicated graphics card, with its CUDA cores, video memory, and in the case of Nvidia, things like RT cores, which provide accelerated performance in a great range of universally accepted applications. I think what's perhaps more disappointing about this is that the card doesn't look like it's going to defiantly be any of the other market options at this stage of the game. If it's beaten the 3060 by a small margin, that's great, but it's definitely not going to take on AMD's 6650 XT, arguably a better card at this price point. We'll have to wait and see what kind of tier of budget Intel bring these cards in at. And actually, if their ARC A750 comes in at like $180, it's going to be the best card for budget games killing out the park something like an RTX 3050. But unfortunately, Intel have gone and squashed my hope just a little bit here. I guess if there's some good news in all of this though, is that we're still expecting Nvidia and AMD to bring new GPUs to the market. And I'm sure Intel's A750 GPU providing these performance numbers a couple of years ago before Nvidia made such unprecedented gains with their 30 series would have stacked up and lined up very well, providing performance akin to something like a 2070 Super. There's plenty of new cars hit in the market and more competition is never bad for anyone. But all I would say is don't wait out right now for an Intel Arc GPU as it looks at the moment, and I hope to be wrong on this, that AMD and Nvidia will plainly be the better bet. With new GPUs from all three of these manufacturers expected at the end of summer or early fall, new CPUs from Intel and AMD also rumoured to land, things are about to get just a little bit spicy. I like Intel's honesty here, but is it the news we were hoping for? Probably not. I'll link everything Everything talked about today in the description below, as well as any appropriate coverage over on our website. Thanks for tuning in, and as always, we'll see you in the next one.